Children's Ministry coming to you from Freedom Church. Welcome all students from the school, all students from the church, all parents and anybody else who's watching. Welcome. We have a 10 second counter on deck here. Going to give you some time, get something to drink, you know, go to the bathroom, get something to eat um, and just maybe get some wiggles out and warmed up even for worship. Okay, so without further ado, here we go. So hopefully you got what you needed, got some wiggles out, you're warmed up for worship, because here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. Blood in the water made the river run red. Ten plagues in Egypt land. Pharaoh should have listened to what God said. Ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. Frogs were jumping in Pharaoh's head. Ten plagues in Egypt land. Pharaoh didn't like it, but the frogs didn't care. Ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. Creepy, crawly, itchy lice. Ten plagues in Egypt land. Mess with the Holy One, you better think twice. Ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. Filthy flies so dirty and vile. Ten plagues in Egypt land. Not exactly Pharaoh style. Ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. The cattle and the horses and the oxen died. Ten plagues in Egypt land. I won't give up, old Pharaoh cried. Ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. Boils and blisters on his skin. Ten plagues in Egypt land. Give it up, Pharaoh, you're never gonna win. Ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. The hail rained down from the heavens on high. Ten plagues in Egypt land. Hurt so much made Pharaoh cry. Ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. Swarms of locusts ate the crops. Ten plagues in Egypt land. Hard hearted Pharaoh just wouldn't stop. Ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. Dark descended in the light of the day. Ten plagues in Egypt land. Pharaoh was lost, couldn't find his way. Ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. First 
borne the final blow. Ten plagues in Egypt land. Finally, Pharaoh let the people go. Ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plagues in Egypt land. All righty, and that brings us to the part of the program where you and me tell the world, okay, what this program is named okay and so on the count of three if you know it with your loudest outside voice bring it baby one two three okay hopefully you know the heavens joined all of us here on earth and now for this next time, everybody else in the whole world will join us because everybody knows now. Okay, if you didn't before, you do now. So here we go, one, two, three. All righty, all right. With everything, with every breath that is in me, as unto the Lord, okay? So um, hopefully you gave him your best war too so but we gotta move on we've gotta pray okay so open it in prayer bow your heads close your eyes heavenly father through jesus christ your son and by the holy spirit we come to you in prayer lord help us to honor christ jesus by examining ourselves prior to taking communion asking ourselves if we believe Jesus Christ was crucified to save us from sin. Have we received salvation by asking Jesus to forgive us from our sin? And will we worship Jesus as we eat the Lord's Supper? Then, upon our belief, let us receive, okay? Open our hearts and our minds to learn your word and what the Bible says about the Lord's Supper. Teach us what you want us to know about the declaration of our faith. And everybody at home said amen, and everybody here said amen. All right, moving right along. Today's title of our lesson is The Lord's Supper. It's coming out of the series known as I Believe, okay? And it is the 19th, okay? of the I Believe series, which is based on declaring my faith. Okay, so you at home, put your hand on your chest and say, my faith, okay? Just like that, because you got to claim it. You got to own it. It is yours. It's your beliefs and what you know to be true, okay? So this lesson is, again, it's focusing on the Lord's Prayer. We're going to learn about the following doctrines, like what is the Lord's Supper, what should you remember at the Lord's Supper? What do the bread and drink represent? Uh, for what do you give thanks at the Lord's Supper? Why do you look ahead at the Lord's Supper? And what is another name for the Lord's Supper? Okay, that's a lot of times to say the Lord's Supper, but oh, you know, we got to get it in us, you know, if it's going to come out. So moving on. Um, before we get started in our lesson, we got to play a game, okay? I'm just saying, um, and the name of this game is Name That Special Event, all right? And so you're going to need, like the picture says um, for me before I even get there, you're going to need some markers and some uh, eraser and whiteboard and wipes and all that, and those will be provided at church uh, for in-person services so that we can do this, but it, at home, just go ahead and, and use whatever you got to draw with and, and a piece of paper, okay? So, so you can join in and do this too. So I'm gonna need some pictures of food, names of special days, markers, volunteers to draw that, be you at home right now and kiddos at the church when we get there, okay? Um, so the object of the game here is to match days with foods, okay? So match them up, all right? 
Um, instructions, volunteers will draw six different foods, okay? Six different foods, and you point to a food pick and then read the list of the special days. There's gonna all be, be a list of special days, six of them, okay? Not to make anything any more confusing than it needs to be. Uh, six and six, matching them up, okay? So from the list of special days, students will determine the day that goes best with the foods drawn, okay? And then you'll just shout out your answers, okay? And so, um, on your marks, let's set and let's go. All right, let's do this. All right, at home, you know, join us. Um, and then in class, we'll do it too. All right, but in the meantime, I've already drawn the pictures and we have the list right here. So bam, it's easy breezy. Um, and if you want to, you can go ahead and draw these pictures really quick. Um, you know, I would give you time to stall. You know, I'm stalling here, I'll give you some time. But I gotta go home because we don't have that much time in videos. You know, we wanna keep them little and short and, you know. But anyhow, so I've got six different pictures, six different uh, special days, names of special days, okay? And which food, you know, do you think you would eat? I'm asking you, okay? And if you know it, it you hear it and you know it, just shout it out, baby, okay? If you know the answer. What kind of food, this is the first one, okay? What kind of food do you normally eat on Valentine's Day? You know, one, two, three, go! All right, all right, hopefully you shout it out. Um, be mine, your little candies, you know, like be mine. Um, a little heart-shaped candies, are, they're usually, you know, pink and a little pastel colors, but anyhow. Okay, so I'm moving on to number two. All right, so Thanksgiving. What would you eat on Thanksgiving? Oh, I, I said it. I said it the wrong way. Or maybe I'm doing it wrong. I don't know. We're going to do it. We're just going to keep rolling with it this way. Okay, so Thanksgiving. What, will, what kind of food here would you eat on Thanksgiving? Okay, so if you say, hmm, one, two, three. If you said, if you shouted it out, boom, 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 boom. Everybody shout it out. If you shout it out, turkey. Baby, you is correct, all right? You know, most most people eat turkey. Not everybody, okay? Not everybody likes turkey. Um, maybe they like something else, but um, Thanksgiving, we're going to get the turkey, okay? All right, and so, okay, moving on. Uh, uh, three, 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 three. Easter. What kind of food do you normally eat on Easter, okay? So on a count of three, one, two, three. Anybody, anybody, man? Okay. Eggs, you, you, you eat decorated eggs, you know, pickled eggs, all kinds of devil eggs, well, just eggs, okay, baby? You, I, you just eat eggs. I don't know why people eat eggs on Easter, they just do. But moving on, cause we got number four, okay? Trying to keep my numbers right and everything else is just, you know, I need some help, I need some kids to help okay so but anyways number four and that is christmas what do you eat on christmas out of these pictures what would you eat on christmas on the count of three one two three shout them out answers would be hopefully candy canes okay that's a candy cane by the way and hopefully you know you can understand what kind of foods these are by my drawing kiddos be drawn better than me i'm like oh my goodness look at that oh but anyhow we gotta move on to five number five birthday what do you eat there at home on your birthday, okay? Anybody's birthday, my birthday, your birthday, your mama's birthday, your daddy's birthday, what kind of food do you eat? Okay, tell me, okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. Shouting them out, oh my goodness, oh my ear, I can't hear. It's too loud, too loud. But um, if you said birthday cake, baby, you's correct, you's correct. Because you know, those are the kind of foods we eat. Most people eat on, on birthdays, okay? All right, and there's one more. So number six is the 4th of July. Okay, what do you eat on the 4th of July? One, two, three, let me know it. If you know it, would you loud outside voice shout it? Oh, all up in my ear, baby. 
Okay, if you said a hot dog, you is correct, okay? And I kind of made it easy because it's a process of elimination. It ain't this, it ain't that, and I know it ain't all of them. It's a hot dog, okay? With ketchup. And if you like mustard on yours, bam, baby, put some mustard on it. But we gotta move on because we can't play all day. Hopefully you had a little bit of fun, but let's go on, okay? Because today we're going to focus on a supper that all Christians eat, okay? And to remember the most important event ever. That's why we eat this particular um, meal on or supper. Um, it's help, it helps us to remember the most important event ever. And from this picture, can anyone there at home guess what supper that might be? Okay, what supper might that be? How do you... You know, what is this? Okay, all right, all right. If you know it, shout it. Hopefully you shouted communion. On the, and I'm gonna go on. Hopefully you did, hopefully you did. If you didn't know what was it? We're just going on, baby, we're just going on. So on the night before, you know, the night before Jesus was crucified, you know, hanging on the cross kind of thing, uh, Jesus met with his disciples, you know, uh, for the last time, for the very last time. And this took place on the Passover. It's a holiday that the Hebrew people had been celebra celebrating for hundreds of years. And on that holiday, they remembered how they had once been slaves in Egypt and how God set them free in one night, man. They were just freed in one night. And on that night in Egypt, all of the Hebrew families sacrificed a lamb. And then they painted its blood on the outside of their doorposts. Like, bam, bam, you know? Just like we have in this picture. We have them being freed as slaves here in this picture. So, but moving on. The Bible says in Exodus that they had been told... They had been told. What they had been told? Well, I'm about to tell you. For the Lord will pass through the land to strike down the Egyptians. But when he sees the blood on the top, you know, on the top here, um, and the sides of the door frame, top and the sides here, the Lord will pass over. He'll just pass that house all together. He'll be like, oh, I see blood. Okay, moving on. Next. You know, he'd be like, next, 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 um, as he saw that. But when he seen one that didn't have any blood, no blood of the, you know, of the lamb over here, he would strike down uh, the Egyptians that lived there, God's enemies, okay? And so he will not permit the death angel to enter your house and strike you down if you have the blood on the top and the sides of your door, all right? Um, some of the foods that they ate um, are on this plate here, and you can create this plate on your own. Um, you can just cut a circle on a piece of paper or just draw a circle on a piece of paper and draw these foods in here. There's many different things that you could do. You could do it in real life. You can have, you know, uh, a lamb, you know, some lamb and some matzo crackers and some lettuce and you can have all these foods. You can just put it on a real plate and then actually eat it. Um, but for this video and class purposes, I basically, I just cut them out um, of a printout and all the different foods. I believe there's one, there's six different foods that they ate to celebrate Passover. And then I colored, I colored them and I stuck them on a plate as we were talking about them. And so they're in the video, you can do that. Or like I said, you can have it real life. You know, you can have lamb and lettuce and, and uh, crackers and all this good stuff. But anyhow, um, but if you wanna do it at home, get you a paper plate, some crayons, some scissors, tape, 
um, an option, you could even draw this, you know, draw it on a plate. If you had a plate or on a piece of paper with a big circle as a plate and just draw it in there. Many, many, many options, okay? Pick one and run with it. This is the one I ran with. And we're gonna run with in class, okay? So, um, object, make a Passover plate. That's the whole purpose of it, okay? We're, I colored individual food items, cut them out, and now we're about to explain each food item and take each food item to the plate, and we'll do that in class, or you could do that at home even. Um, so the first food item on the Passover plate is, and I'm gonna say this wrong, I know it, but you can correct me at home um, and in person, but the way I pronounce it is charoset, which is a mixture of apples, walnuts, and cinnamon. Oh, that sounds yummy. And that represents the mud and the straw used when making the Pharaoh's bricks. They were slaves in Egypt, remember? And so they had to make their own bricks out of mud and straw. Um, and so again, we're gonna tape that food item to the plate. All right, the next food item, food item number two, um, is parsley dipped in salt. So we got parsley and we got salt. You can just dip those in, dip it in to the, to the uh, water and the salt. And this represents the tears of the Hebrew people during slavery. And God saw those tears and he saw their oppression. He saw the, how they were being abused. Um, and he was not absent. He was with their, them. He was encouraging them. And um, he had a, a bright future for them planned. And so anyway, but those, again, are the tears during that time that they shed. So the food item that's going to be taped to the plate is going to be parsley dipped in salt water. The third item is a boiled egg. Okay, and this is a boiled egg cut in half so you can see the yolk and um, the egg white on the outside. So this boiled egg, it symbolizes the cycle of life, you know, um, the losses of the Hebrew people and hope for a future. So the food item to be taped to the plate, the Passover plate is going to be a boiled egg. Food item number four on the Passover plate is roasted lamb. And it symbolizes, this symbolizes that roasted lamb, it symbolizes the sacrificial offering that the Hebrews made to God, okay? Um, and this food item is going to be taped to the plate and it is roasted lamb, okay? Food item number five, there's a whole lot of food here making a girl hungry, I'm telling you. But anyhow, moving on, food item five, horseradish or romaine lettuce. And this romaine lettuce, I believe that's romaine, uh, represents the bitterness of life in bondage. Oh man, you, can you imagine being in bondage and how bitter and angry you must have been, you know, back then? Um, as Pharaoh's slave. Woo. But anyhow, this food item that's going to be taped to the plate is uh, horseradish or romaine lettuce. Passover plate food item number six. Matzah or also known as unle unleavened, uh, I'm going to say that, unleavened wafers and wine which or grape juice are also used as part of the ceremony. Um, biblical tradition says that the Hebrews had to leave Egypt so quickly that they did not have time, no time, none, 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 to let the bread rise. So they made dough without yeast, okay? And so, and this is matzah and it's going to be the, it's the last food item to be taped to the passover plate um, but it's also known as unleavened or unleavened wafers 
As Jesus ate with his disciples on that Passover night, he did something very surprising. Whoa, you know, just, whoa, give me your best surprise um, look there, you know, at home, you know, just a little startle somebody, like surprise you, you know, anyways. But uh, he did something very surprised, and I imagine the disciples were just looking like you and me, very surprised, okay? And so the Bible says it best in Matthew. It says, as they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and he just lifted it up to heaven, and he blessed it. And then he broke it in pieces, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body said Jesus. And Jesus's body was about to be broken by Roman soldiers. They would use a whip and a heavy cross, nails and a spear to break his body. Okay. <sighs> Jesus could have stopped this from happening, but he did not. He broke the bread and had the disciples take turns breaking it and taking a bite, you know. Just as the blood of the Passover lamb had to be shed for the Hebrew people to be saved from the death angel, so Jesus, the lamb of God, had to shed his blood to save us from sin. As each of the disciples drank from the cup that night, it showed how Jesus' blood was going to be poured out, okay? And when the crown, for example, uh, when the crown of thorns was shoved into Jesus' head, his blood was poured out. And then when his back was beaten with a whip, his blood was poured out. And when his hands were pierced with nails, his blood was poured out. And when his side was pierced with a spear, Jesus' blood was poured out. All right, so we come to our worksheet. We have a Lord's Supper worksheet, and these are the instructions, okay? You're going to have columns for things. I believe this is the one, maybe, maybe it's not, anyhow. Um, but anyway, let me read the directions that are on this slide, okay? But anyways, Lord's Supper instructions. You'll need a worksheet, a reader, and some good listeners, okay? And so um, uh, try this at home, and in person we're going to do it too. So the reader is going to read a scripture. The students answer questions asked and there'll be some explaining to do somebody got to explain babe explain somebody explain we come right. to our worksheet named lord's supper um and this particular style slide is dealing with the word remember all right so my readers i need you to look in first corinthians eleven twenty five, and it says in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood, said Jesus. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. Okay? So, stopping and explaining here. Ever since Jesus died 2,000 years ago, Jesus' followers have been eating the Lord's Supper together as a remembrance. So, my question is, what does God want us to remember? Okay, what does he want us to remember when we eat um, together the Lord's Supper? Okay, and then the answer is going to be, forever and always that the suffering and the death of Jesus Christ that's what we are to be remembering the suffering and death of Jesus Christ moving on to the worksheet uh, portion that talks about give thanks okay um, so the scripture is coming out of 1st Corinthians eleven twenty four. And when Jesus broke the bread, he gave thanks for it. When we eat 
the Lord's Supper, we should not simply remember that Jesus died for us. We should give thanks to God for Jesus is dying for our sins, okay? Um, the worksheet portion that talks about look ahead, all right? 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. that's where it's coming out of. Um, what future event does this verse mention? Um, the second coming of Jesus Christ. Mm. Explain, hmm, Jesus' followers should keep eating the Lord's Supper until he returns and all of God's people are with him in heaven. Eating the Lord's Supper should remind us that Jesus is coming. All right, the Lord's Supper. Um, in closing, baby, somebody shut that door. And I'm about to shut my phone. If you got one at home, shut it, okay? Because our lesson is just about over. Um, this portion of the worksheet talks about communion. Scripture's coming out of 1 Corinthians 10, 16. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? So the question here and the answer is, this verse contains a word that is another name for the Lord's Supper. What is it? Okay, and if you're at home and you said, baby, that's communion, you are correct, okay? Because, you know, the Lord's Supper is also known as communion. Um, communion means fellowship and sharing. And when we eat the Lord's Supper and worship to God, it brings us into closer fellowship with Jesus Christ, okay? And we are blessed by his presence as we praise, remember, and thank him for his incredible sacrifice. Communion, it also brings us into a closer fellowship with other Christians as we worship Jesus together. Our love for one another, it goes deeper through the celebration of the Lord's Supper as Christ's presence draws us together. All right, having finished our lesson, boom, let's focus in on God and the words to the following song and let's worship him for who he is and all he has done as we sing and dance, expressing our love to him.
worship song um, and just focusing in on um, Jesus Christ and everything that he has done. If in your spirit and in your heart and mind and soul, you just feel convinced and convicted that, hey, I'm a sinner. I, I have messed up made mistakes, and I need to be forgiven. I need a Savior um, to save me from this life of sin. Um, if that's you, okay, today is your day because we're presenting you with the opportunity to get right with God the Father through belief in Jesus Christ, okay? And so your prayer away. So let's just bow our heads together and let's pray this prayer. It's also known as a salvation prayer. Say, dear God, I know I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus Christ is the son of God. I believe that Jesus died for my sin. I believe that you raised Jesus to life and I want to trust Jesus as my savior. I want to follow Jesus as Lord from this day forward. Lord, guide my life and help me to do your will. And we pray all of this in the name of Jesus and everybody at home said amen and everybody here said amen. If you have said that prayer for the very first time, even for the hundredth time, praise God because staying, getting right and staying right with God is, is it's of the utmost importance, okay? It's the ultimate thing that you need to do in your whole life, okay? And so, but don't stop there, baby. Don't. Just don't do it, okay? Um, it's tempting, but don't stop there. You need to get in your Bible and read it, and you need to worship God through song and your life, you know, just your life in general is worship, serving the Lord, okay? And then also going to church. Um, these things are going to help you to grow in your relationship with God, okay, and, and to help you to know Jesus better and to help mold and make you to become more and more like Jesus Christ and make you ready for heaven, okay, not just here, but heaven, all right, someday we're going to go be with him forever, all right, may not be today or tomorrow even, but someday, and that is a future so bright, you got to wear shades, baby, you know, so um, moving on, though, because we can't stay there. We've got answers and questions. It's going to help you to um, get today's lesson down deep in your soul and your spirit and your heart and help you that to come out of you as you're living here on earth, okay? So do those things. Um, if you say, man, you know, she's been talking about the Lord's Prayer and communion and uh, this supper, you know, and I want to do it. Okay. So, Hey baby, you know, if that's you, this experience, pray and have communion. Um, it's for you. All right. It's designed specifically for you. All right. And there are, you know, what you need instructions on what to do before you even, to take part and have the Lord's Supper. And then there's steps that are going to help you. It's just actually a, a suggested format to worship and celebrate the Lord's Supper. Okay, and so you can put this on pause and, and just take a picture of it or write it down or whatever. Um, but not just this slide, but the next one. Because those are going to be instructions. Again, just a format suggested on you uh, partaking like in prayer and communion communion um and they're at home with your family all right so i recommend that i highly recommend you to do that it's what the lord commanded and it's going to help us 
to be obedient, okay, as unto him. And, and when we obey, that shows our love, okay, to, to God, all right? So um, there's even another slide. So um, just, just uh, take those and just run with them. Again, it's a format, just a general run. You make, you make it your own, okay? And uh, having said all that, testimonies, prayer requests, and needs, bring them, baby. We're taking them still, so um, give them while they're being taken, okay? Um, body heads, we're closing in prayer. God has really helped us to, um, to learn more about him, and uh, so we're, gonna, we're just going to go to him in prayer and thank him for that. So by your heads, close your eyes. Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, and by the Holy Spirit, we come to you in, in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to honor Christ Jesus by examining ourselves prior to taking communion, asking ourselves if we believe Jesus died. Jesus, asking ourselves if we believe Jesus was crucified to save us from sin. Have we received salvation by asking Jesus to forgive us from sin? And will we worship Jesus as we eat the Lord's Supper? Then, upon our belief, let us receive. Thank you for opening our hearts and minds to learn your word and what the Bible says about the Lord's Supper. Thank you for teaching us what you want us to know about the declaration of our faith. And everybody at home said amen, and everybody here said amen. Till next time, know, okay, without a shadow of a doubt, that I love, 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 and miss you, okay? And that I hope to see you soon. Stay healthy, safe, strong, and remember to read, pray, worship, and serve, okay? Also, you did a, an, an, an <laughs> astounding, I can't even say it, you did, an, 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 you did an astounding job learning today, okay? Practice that at home, Angela, before you go on video. But anyhow, so here's a little something, something, okay? Um, green with a little angel to sink your teeth into that hopefully will help you honor the Lord. Okay? I love you. Now behold the Lamb The precious Lamb of God Born into sin that I may live again He's the precious
you for being born for me too. 